shall we lift up our heart to the Lord. Father, we thank you that you are our Father in heaven. And at all times, Lord, you are our God. Father, we thank you that in good times and in bad times, that we are never alone, that our Father is with us, Lord. Father, we thank you that you take us on a journey, Lord. And we thank you that it's a journey of faith, Lord. We don't see everything. But Father, we, you have given, we, give, we have sufficient grace for each day. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And on the eve of a general election, uh, where most we are all, we have been praying, waiting with bated breath, asking God's will for our land, for our people. Um, thanks be to God, God's hand is not shortened. He has his Josephs everywhere in the nation. They may be hidden from uh, from men's eyes but the Lord is preparing his people his Josephs are everywhere and, and Psalm 105 verse 19 says until the time that his word came Joseph. and Joseph was altogether an extraordinary person he was a young man of great personal beauty he and he showed up some very lovely characteristics, very Christ-like, wonderful ways he had. He was full of gentleness, kind, and there was truth in him. And the grace of God we found when we look at Joseph made him brilliant in mind. And even he had brilliance and he was also endowed with very personable looks handsome personality as we know from the event of Mrs. Potiphar. But Joseph was misunderstood by his brothers. He was envied by the brothers. You might say was like a swan in the duck's nest. His superior genius, his character separated him from the rest of the family and none of them could understand him. He was, the, therefore, because they couldn't understand him, he was the object of envy and hatred. So that they even proposed to murder him and ended up selling him as a slave to Egypt. This, in a synopsis, that was Genesis 37, 20, 26 to 27. But Joseph was destined for a nobler lot than the brothers. The brothers were to feed their flocks was ordained to feed the world. The brothers were to rule their own families, but Joseph was to govern the most ancient of empires. Brothers and sisters, there is a point in this. We know it for a, for a certainty that wherever God gives extraordinary gifts and when he has graced someone and he appoints an extraordinary career then he also God also appoints unusual tests so when tests come remember it's also the grace of God at work shall we read together Psalm 105 13 to 15 and 17 to 21. Shall we read it together? When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved king, kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. 
He made him Lord of his house and ruler of all his substance. Let's see the same story from the New Testament. Acts chapter 7, 9 to 14. This from the sermon of, of uh, Stephen. Stephen, the first martyr of the church, he referred to Joseph. Acts chapter 7, verses 9 to 14. Yes. Shall we read it together? It's good to read the scriptures together. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. And delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor, and the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Verse 14. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. Praise be to God. Not only our whole heart. You hear messages all the time or most of the time God wants our whole heart. But he also wants our heart whole. Because restoration matters to God. That we be restored. That we, be, we come into the right place with our God. Restoration is very important to God. More than what we can do for Him, He wants us to be realigned and correctly aligned with Him. That is God. He, wants, he works in our inward parts. And, uh, and when it came to Joseph, he was cast in many roles. He was a loved son. His father loved him. And it is said he went outside, the, outside their tent and he would speak about his son, about Joseph, the loved son. How beautiful, how wonderful, what a brilliant young man, how prophetic he was. He would be speaking about his son, loved son. But that brought envy in the hearts of the brothers. He was sold as a slave and then cast in prison. And finally, promoted as Prime Minister of that called Egypt. And at that point of time, when he was in Egypt, there was this famine that hit all of that part of the world. And there was no food for the people of God. There was no food for the, for the brothers who were left behind in Canaan. And that Jacob... Father Jacob called his sons and he says in Genesis 42, I'll just take you through some of the scriptures. You don't have to turn, but I'll read the scriptures to you so you get the story in perspective. And he told the sons, indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. And he tells the boys, go down to that place and buy for us there that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers Genesis 42, 1 to 3, they went down to buy grain in Egypt. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. That's Genesis 42, 6. This is basically the story that's take, that is being unfolded. Then at that point, Joseph saw his brothers, recognized them. Genesis 42, 6, 42, 7. He recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke harshly to them, the scripture says. He spoke roughly to them. We find that in the initial years, Joseph seems to have chosen not to face his past. He was having, was going through a journey, ups and down and up again. But one thing he had determined, I'm going to forget the past. But by the time he saw his brothers again, Joseph 
had been prime minister for nearly a decade these days prime minister is a matter of contention in our land but for joseph he got it uncontested that was god's favor and god's promotion for him but prime minister for 7 to 8 years yes and then let's look at some options that joseph could have resorted to during those 7 to 8 years joseph could travel anywhere he wanted yet he decided i'm not going back to canaan he could have he could have attempted revenge assemble an army take go uh, get back to canaan settle the score with his brothers but he just chose to let that past be where it was though he had the resources he let that be he could have sent for his father within that time frame of 7 to 8 years or at least sent a messenger he could have he had he had all that time but he did not do that he did not he he did not want to have anything to do with the past he knew where to find his family he knew the road back to canaan but he chose deliberately chose not to contact them he kept his family secrets a secret no one in egypt knew anything about joseph's beginnings or how he came to be the prime minister he kept those secret in his heart hidden away untouched and untreated joseph was content to leave his past in the past even as we go through this message maybe the holy spirit will speak to you about certain incidents certain events in your own life that you are content to just push down and leave it down below and allow dust to collect on certain incidents events certain memories certain events though joseph was content to leave his past in the past god was not because restoration matters to god and because the healing of the heart involves always the healing of the past so therefore you will find god shakes things up god shakes up our lives and sometimes we don't know why get our attention he's trying to make us focus on some of the things that he would want us to voluntarily attend but when we don't when we push them aside then he shakes up our life and he because of his concern for us because he will not just um, just shod over matters so he is he tries trying to get our attention if i can further build up going through the build up of events Genesis 41:57 says all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the lands and in the long line of folks that were uh, that were appearing uh, <coughs> appealing to Egypt for a handout of food there were long queues of people see whom the cat is kind of dragging in before Joseph Genesis 42:3 so Joseph's 10 brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt and the thing is the scripture says Joseph heard them before he saw them and immediately he detected that Hebrew chatter Hebrew was not only the language of his of his home it was it was it was the dialect of his heart nobody knew that he knew another language and he could hear the brothers chattering away in hebrew the brothers were bolder they were different time had caught up 20 years had gone by now they were bolder they were grayer they were rough skinned and when they came to when when their turn came to ask joseph for grain they didn't recognize him the scripture says 42:8 because joseph was different his beard was shaved his robe was royal and the language he spoke was no more hebrew but egyptian and the strange thing is it never occurred to the brothers they were standing before their baby brother it never crossed their mind look at the hand of god now coming through picture it 
maybe the brother who carried they came with silver with bags with a bag full of silver they came to trade they didn't come to reconcile with a long lost brother they came to aim for trading and maybe the